Hi everyone, welcome to my review on The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This is a, a very popular book, very popular. It's uh, popular on Booktube, on Booktok, I'm pretty sure. It uh, won the Goodreads Award in 2020. So it's not a new book, but it is uh, very popular. Uh, there will be spoilers in this video, but I'll keep them to um, later. I'll pop a timestamp in the description so you can know when to stop watching that. Not stop watching for the spoiler territory. So if you haven't read this book, watch the first part of this video. Um, see if you want to read the book. If you've already read the book or you're not interested in reading the book and want to sort of know a bit more about why I feel about it the way that I do, watch till the end. So what is the Midnight Library book about? Um, so it's a sort of magical realism type story. And the premise is that our protagonist, Nora Seed, who's kind of a, he's an adult, um, she lives on her own and basically her life is just all nothing's really worked out she's had all these opportunities in her life that she didn't really take or think she should have taken she's suffering from depression she's on meds and all that um various relationships in her life have gone south um she's not really where she wants to be and then through a bunch of things more things is going wrong like she lost her job and her cat died and stuff, she decides she wants to end her life. And so, but when she does so, instead of just dying and just nothing, she breaks up in this library and is told that you can choose to go to any of your, any of these other lives. There's a book in this library for every possible life you could have lived, any way that things could have turned out. And you can drop into any one of these and if you like it, you can stay. If not, well, you can try something else until you keep looking until you find the one that you want. And so she, the majority of the book is Nora going out and trying out a bunch of these lives. Like, um, what if she continued doing swimming competitively and became an Olympian? What if she got married to the person that she was supposed to get married to and open a pub with him? What if she stayed in her brother's band and they made it big? a bunch of other different things that could have happened to her and so uh, I, I guess the point of the story is um, or the point of the plot really is having you guessing what kind of life will finally stick so that is the premise and uh, this is not my first Matt Haig, Matt Haig book I've also read How to Stop Time by him um, which is another sort of um, magical realism type story and I like that one a lot better. I gave the Midnight Library three stars on Goodreads and to be fair it would have been more like three and a half if uh, half stars were an option in the app um, because I don't think this is a bad book and I don't but I don't think it's an amazing book. It didn't blow me away or I didn't and I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. Uh, I, I don't think it's worth the hype, I will say that. I don't get why it's so hyped. Actually, I sort of, I sort of understand why it, look, it, on the surface level, it seems more profound than it really is. Um, and the ending was predictable, although part of that is not really the book's fault. Part of that was, well, the setup and the way that it couldn't end it couldn't be allowed to end any other way than the way that it did and i won't say any more on that until um i've officially started the spoilery part of the video so throughout all the experiences that nora has all the lives that she tries out she quote unquote learns a bunch of lessons about supposedly the meaning of life and it, it's not even subtle like she studied philosophy in uni and so she um, makes, makes all these points about um, things she learned then in her degree, 
things our favourite philosophers believed and looking at it from that perspective. So it's not even subtle that this book is trying to be deep, but I don't think it really succeeds in the way that it is trying to. In the, It really doesn't. Um, I was looking through reviews on Goodreads and someone said that the lessons that are learned throughout this book are kind of reminiscent of those aesthetic quotes that you see on uh, Instagram or Facebook or Tumblr, you know, where, where they have some quote and some background with like nature or sunset or something in the background and some rosy filter and all the rest of it, those kind of aesthetic quotes, you know, the ones. Um, they're supposed to be inspirational but aren't really anything that you can act on. They're, and they all sort of sound the same, just flowery words but with no substance. And yeah, that pretty much put into words how what I was sort of feeling about this book that I couldn't quite put my finger on. But like I said, I don't think it's a bad book. It, it just wasn't as good as I expected given the hype and the fact that uh, it was recommended to me and it seemed like something I would like. And the fact that I liked a book by this author already, it it just didn't didn't do it for me in the way that it seems to have done for a lot of people. So now this is part two of the video. Please leave if you don't want to be spoiled. If you've read the book or you're not really interested in reading it, but you want to see what I why I feel like this way or what could have been done better keep watching and this might be a little bit trigger warning-y but I've already mentioned the setup so you know what kind of territory this is uh, going into but so part of the reason why I said the ending of this is pretty predictable how this book ends is this she tries a bunch of lives they don't work out she finds one that is seemingly perfect nothing could go wrong she's got a loving husband and child that she loves and who adore her and even that falls apart because she realizes I didn't make this this isn't um, I like I, I got here but I didn't do the work to get here I just kind of jumped in at this point after the work had been done and it's not earned and so then she walks back to the library and it's collapsing um, and so she, she there's only one option left, like all the other lives have been destroyed. The only option left is to go back to her original life and decide to continue with it, to decide that it's worth living, decide to continue writing the story, literally. And I think that's a bit of a cop out. But unfortunately, given the premise of the book and the setup, I don't think it was allowed to end any other way. The view that society has on suicide is not uh, a positive one. And yeah, I, I do believe it's noble to try and you know convince someone to not to do it. But at the same time, uh, it's very stigmatized in that uh, it's kind of assumed that you will you will live and you will like it. So help me God. Uh, that is the general view on life, and so. She wasn't going to be allowed to stay in any of these other lives because she didn't earn them. And also because every time she jumped into a new life, she didn't gain the knowledge that was specific to that life. She didn't have any memories of how they got there. So, of course, that was another thing I found very frustrating about this book that just, it felt very awkward and clunky to me and frustrating to read because in each new life she was having to, you know, like, it was like, she had a part in a play or she was an actor in a play or a movie and she had n no, she didn't have the lines, she hadn't read the script. She just had a vague idea of what the movie was about but no idea what she was supposed to do or who any of the other people or characters in the story were. And that was kind of frustrating to read over and over again because she went through the same problems and that was never going to be conducive to her liking any of these lives. And that wasn't the fault of any of the lives or any of the people in, within them it was just a prop it was a fault of the rules of the midnight library and how it was supposed to work 
so of course none of them were going to stick because she wasn't the same person that had gotten to the point that in which she jumped in and she wasn't going to be allowed to reincarnate or die because society wouldn't you know you're not allowed to write a suicide where things end any other way other than she realize you realize that you actually didn't want to die in the first place um, in reality, you know, things do work out for her in her original life afterwards. She gets some help, she finds a job, she gets on better terms with her brother again, but the thing is, the reality is that that's, that's kind of not guaranteed. You know, she was suffering from depression and that's not just going to disappear overnight. Um, you know, there's like chemicals in your brain, for example, that affect that, that cause that that's not just going to disappear just because she's had this whole midnight library experience. Um, you know, so yeah, it felt very forced and very idealistic and not realistic, which made all of the messages and morals that the book was trying to teach slash preach shallow and unactionable. And, you know, not actually that deep when you actually apply a bit of critical thinking to them for a couple of seconds. Another problem I had with the book was the artificial tension that was created. Um, at some point after she returns from one of the, her lives she's tried out and it didn't work out, the library is having some issues um, and the librarian there says, oh, I, I don't know what's going on, it's something to do with you, but I don't know. And you know, maybe you can keep going through hundreds and hundreds of lives and keep doing this forever until you find one, but you're not guaranteed, clearly, this is proof of that. And so I guess that was put in there to sort of artificially cause tension, but it, that's just it, it was very artificial. It was never explained, really, why the library was doing that, went through those inst unstable periods. Um, until, you know, at the end it was falling apart and it's that that was kind of said because the best life you could have had still wasn't good enough but that explanation felt very shallow it didn't really explain this, what happened and it again made a point in the story um, earlier on where um, the library experienced those periods of instability feel like it was just tension creating for the sake of tension because otherwise the story doesn't really have any stakes she can keep going through infinite lives forever and ever and ever and so there needed to be a way to put a cap on that and give create pressure for her to find something and stick with it so yeah that's basically the, the problems that i have with this book is that uh it's it's kind of shallow really the messages that it's trying to teach you are shallow and don't really apply if you think about reality and you're realistic about the things that it's trying to say um especially since we don't all have this midnight library sort of experience you know you don't get to just pick through pick a new life if you don't like this one that's not how it works and even once Nora goes back to her original life up at the end of the book she still retains her memories of the midnight library all the lessons she learned there through all the different lives she could have lived that's, you know, that's not reality. You know, even if you went through that kind of experience of you wanting to die and then not dying and then realising you wanting to live, you don't get all those kind of experiences in reality because this is just a story. This is fantasy. So it, it doesn't really stick for me. And maybe I'm just a person who's not really receptive to this kind of... Um, you know, aesthetic quote um, sort of things, those kind of preachy messages. I'm not someone who believes in epiphanies and epiphanies are what Nora has throughout the book. Um, and I get it, it's fiction, it's not supposed to be realistic, but this was sort of trying to be, you know, this was trying to teach you messages to make you appreciate life or tell you how to live and that it's okay to struggle and it's okay if things go wrong and none of it is actionable and the fact this is a, all a fact like a fantasy setting is used as the backdrop for these messages 
takes away from those messages because you know this is fantasy and this is not how it's all going to actually work. This is not how this works. So it's not actionable. And I just think that it could have been done better. For example, if Nora um, died naturally, if she lived a complete life and died of old age and then she got to decide, do you want to live a different version of your life, jump into some point when you were younger and live a different version of your life? Or do you want to be reincarnated as someone new and then have that be the setup for the whole Midnight Library multiple lives thing? And then her eventually deciding to reincarnate someone new rather than relive as the same person over and over might have been a bit more meaningful and it would have given more um, freedom to the ending um, and the kind of messages that got her to that point of being able to choose because um, the author Matt Haig didn't really have a choice in regards to how this book ended because you can't have a character want to commit suicide, have that be the whole point of the book, and then not have them decide that they actually want to live after all. Society does not allow that. And that very much crippled this book. So that concludes my um, review and um, critique and analysis of the Midnight Library, its messages and... Unfortunately, it's failure to deliver those messages in a way that I think would be truly meaningful, truly actionable, truly impactful.